Let's go create a maintenance plan. This session is for developers and sysadmins only. If you're a uh, production DBA, if you're used to coding in T-SQL, go watch the Ola Hollingren video. This isn't for you. This is for developers and sysadmins who need to protect their SQL servers as easily as possible. Everything that I'm going to show you is vaguely similar from all versions of SQL Server. You may have some real slight differences. I'm using 2019 here, but overall the big picture is going to be the same. We're going to create two maintenance plans. One is going to be for the tasks we want to run overnight. The other is going to be the tasks that we want to run like every 15 minutes, our log file backups. Let's get started by connecting in with SQL Server Management Studio. Go in under Management right click on maintenance plans and choose new or a maintenance plan wizard this is way easier than doing a new maintenance plan from scratch the thing is this thing has a lot of really crappy defaults which is why i have to make a video to tell you where to steer away from the defaults so we'll hit maintenance plan wizard then I will go name my maintenance plan. I like naming my maintenance plans with the name of the department that supports them. And then the first one that we're going to create is the overnight maintenance plan. We're going to do a single schedule for the entire plan and then choose the schedule. I'm going to go click change here. And I'm going to pick a day, a, a time every night when load slows down on my server. Say on mine, maybe people start leaving at 7.30 or leave at 7 p.m. So I'm going to say 7.30 p.m. The server's not going to stop dead. Things will still be accessible. But I want it to happen as soon as possible after they leave. Because this way, if something breaks, I'm going to get an email early on. Like if I have database corruption. I, the earlier that I can get an email about those kinds of things, the better. So I'm going to start mine every night at 7.30 PM. And I'll hit OK. So now I'll hit next. As I go through this, every time I hit next, I'll just tell you and give you a second. For those of you who are doing the video, who are doing it live, you can hit pause and get your act together here. So I'll go hit next. Now to ask me what I want to do, I'm going to tell you what you want during the overnight maintenance window. Clean up, which means get rid of your old backup files. Take a full backup, because you want those happening once a day. Cleanup history just gets rid of the old metadata inside SQL Server's tables that track backups. Then all the way up at the top, you want check database integrity, which just makes sure that you have uh, no corruption whatsoever. Now here's where things get a little weird. If you have Standard Edition, if you have SQL Server Standard Edition, check the boxes for Reorg and Update, Reorganize and Update. If you have Enterprise Edition, aka Expensive Edition, check the box for Rebuild Indexes. Don't do both. Either Standard Edition does Reorganize and uh, Update Statistics, Enterprise Edition does Rebuilds. So you're going to want to know why. The reason why is because Enterprise Edition has the ability to rebuild indexes, which is better, but it doesn't take the tables offline. Standard Edition, for reasons of money grubbing on Microsoft's part, does not do rebuilding indexes online. It actually takes the tables offline. I don't want, in the middle of the night, for example, I don't want a bunch of tables disappearing from your database uh, and having your report queries time out, your website go down if you're running Standard Edition. So that's why we do the changes that we do inside here. I am going to check all three. You should not. The only reason I'm doing it is because i got to tell both the Standard Edition and Enterprise Edition people how their stuff is going to work. So make yours look like mine, except just pick one of the rebuilds and reorgs, and then hit Next. Check the order. For me, I want the backups to happen first. I want those out of the way so that if for some reason, if all hell breaks loose with my storage or my VM capacity, whatever, and the job starts taking forever and I have to come forever, my favorite song from churches, the, not the building, the music pop group. Now, so if I want to make sure that the backup gets out of the way first, so let's move that up all the way to the top. And then everything else can stay the same. I'm not worried about the rest of it. The rest of it's okay. Uh, so then I'm going to hit next. 
And then now you're going to get a screen full of options for each of the tasks that we picked. So the first one, it's going to say the first one that we put in order was the full backup task. Any time that you see a list of databases on here, a drop down grid for the databases, choose all of them. Just hit the drop down and hit the button that says all databases and check the box that says ignore databases where the state is not online reason why is I don't want you manually picking and choosing which databases you take care of. Just take care of all of them so that if somebody comes in when you're not looking and adds a database, you don't have to go back and tweak anything. Don't worry about system databases. Just include them in all databases. Treat everything the same because sooner or later some yo-yo is going to go in and add a table in one of your system databases and then they're going to ask you to restore it and you're not going to have a good time if you were ignoring system databases. So I'll say, OK, then where do you want to back up to? I want to back up to disk because this is not the year you know, 1994. Tape doesn't really make sense. Uh, so then becomes your destination. Where do you want to back up your databases? I like creating a subdirectory for each database because you're going to end up with a whole bunch of files inside there. If you don't, that's OK. The folder, I actually don't like backing up to a local drive. I way prefer a UNC path. I want to get them off the server as quickly as possible because I can't tell you how many emergencies I've had where somebody has hosed a server to the point where it won't boot. And if I can't get my backups off of the server, they're not really backups, are they? So I like getting them right off as quickly as possible. I'll do whack, whack, uh, server name, whack, share name. I don't have that here in my lab, though. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to use the same drive where it's suggesting. Um, then over on options up across the top, uh, backup compression, you want backup compression. Even if you set a default at the server level, I still put compress backup inside here because sooner or later somebody's going to come behind you and accidentally change the backup server setting or backup setting at the server level. Don't screw around with it. Just compress everything every time. Uh, uh, some folks will try to verify their backups because it sounds attractive. Here's the thing, though. It's effectively doing a restore, but just not writing on the server. It reads the whole entire backup, so it takes forever. It makes your forever makes your maintenance plans take much longer. I don't have that much time overnight. So if you want to verify your backups, go test them on another server, and we'll talk about that in another module. I want to perform checksum. This does not take much additional time at all. We're talking like 1%, 2%. And what it does is it checks to make sure that the, the data that it's reading off of disk actually has valid checksums on it. It also makes it easier for you to test your restores over on the other side whenever you go to do the restores. I want continue on error because if something goes to hell in a handbasket with one of the databases, I want to keep continuing to do backups across the rest of my databases. Encryption, this is left as an exercise for the reader. If you want to do that, it looks, based on the UI, it looks like you're going to scroll down and find more stuff. As of SQL Server 2019, you're not. Somebody just got sloppy with the, uh, uh, with the screen UI here. And you don't have to worry about the schedule because we have one schedule for the entire uh, plan. So that's the one for our backups. We'll hit next. Checking the database integrity. This one's the uh, same thing here. We're going to choose all of our databases and ignore the databases where the state isn't online. Say OK. Now this checkbox is terrible, so I want to uncheck the box that says physical only. Physical only does a lightweight check for corruption. I want to completely check for corruption because corruption is only good in like movies. It's not really that good in real life. So uncheck the box for physical only and then hit next. Reorganizing indexes. So this is for the folks who are on standard edition. SQL Server standard edition will have checked the reorganize index task. Same thing with databases. I'm going to choose all databases and ignore where the state is not online and hit OK. 
For the rest of this stuff, you can kind of leave it as is. I don't have to, to screw around with any of these. If you don't have these, it, that's okay. It means that you're on an older version of SQL Server back before Microsoft started adding all these cool uh, percentages. There are all these cool uh, parameters inside the GUI. You can leave these exactly as is. These are fine. And then hit Next. Those of you who are on the big expensive enterprise edition, you get the index rebuild task. You're gonna do the same thing here with choosing for the drop down. choose all databases, ignore where the state is not online and say, okay. Now down here, the rest of these with these options, now finally we get an actual scroll bar where we can go down further and see other stuff. Again, I'm actually okay with these. I don't have a big problem with these. Sometimes with some of my blog posts or whatever, you'll, you'll read that I recommend changing this to a higher number. Like if fragmentation goes up, say 70%, then go through and rebuild them. I am fine with these as defaults when we're developers and systems administrators. These are okay. Um, now the one box you do have to check up here, remember we talked about our nice fancy expensive edition. We want to keep this index online so we don't have users pissed off and screaming in the middle of the night. Click this box that says keep index online and then down underneath here you're going to get different uh, parameters down here depending on which version of SQL Server you're on. A newer version of SQL Server, I always forget if it was like 2016 or when it was, added this low priority where we'll kind of wait in the background where we're, when we're rebuilding these. I'm not going to go into the, the depths of these in the course of this video. Just check the box to keep the thing online. And if the index doesn't support online re index rebuilds, I wouldn't rebuild them. If you're just a developer or systems administrator, I don't want SQL Server taking objects offline when you're not around. So we've got that, we'll make it look like that. I'll give you a second to uh, go see that little fella and then hit next. Next up is updating statistics. Same thing, we'll say all databases. And this is the standard edition crowd. Standard edition crowd, make all of your databases happen. Um, and the rest of the options are fine here. And we'll say next. History cleanup. All right, so now we're back to everybody. Everyone's going to get this, whether you're on standard edition or enterprise edition. I like these exactly the way that they are. These are go get or delete the history for all of those kinds older than four weeks. You don't need this. Anything older than four weeks, trust me, you're not querying this stuff. No one else is querying this stuff. You're fine. Leave those defaults as is, hit next. This one is different. Maintenance cleanup is where SQL Server deletes your old backups. And we need to have a quick discussion around how much backup history you keep around. So me personally, I'm super paranoid. I want as much backup history as practical. Depending on your company, you may also have long-term backup retention requirements. For example, you may need to keep the weekly backups for six weeks, the monthly backups for six months, the annual backups for three years, whatever. SQL Server is nowhere near that powerful or complicated. All we basically get to do is say how long we want to keep backup files around, and that's it. At the bare minimum, I probably want a week's worth of backups because I'll tell you what inevitably happens. Something goes wrong on a Friday and no one gets the emails about it and you're on vacation or you're on sick time on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And by the time you eventually get involved on Thursday, you need that backup history in order to go in and spelunk and figure out whatever was going on or resuscitate somebody's object from the dead. So I like to keep at least one week's worth of backup history. Some shops are cheap. They can't afford to do that. Other shops will move things off of a backup share quickly onto some longer term retention period of storage. Have those discussions with you and your IT manager, whoever the sysadmins are at the shop, in order to figure out the right amount of days for backup retention history. I'm not going to cover that here. But for me, I am going to say, go delete the files that are backups. Here's the place where I'm going to go look for the backups that I'm going to delete. So for example, if you're using a UNC path, you would put the UNC path in here. Here, because I was backing up to a local drive, I just have to do that EMSS school backups and say, okay. 
And then the file extension that I want to delete, it can be things like back or TRN, include first level subfolders if I made a subfolder for each database. And then here's how long retention file you want. So delete files older than say, for me, I'm going to say older than one week. Do, 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 do. And then say next. Now, where do I want to write a report to in the event that all hell broke loose? You can put it on a UNC path if you want. I'm going to stick mine in the same folder where my backups were. So I'm going to go put it over in, because I don't like stuff on the C drive. It just gives me the heebie-jeebies. seems kind of unprofessional. Then again, it is me, and I am completely unprofessional. So there we go. Um, I don't like emailing a report, only because it's going to email a report whether it succeeds or fails, and that's just more spam. If you want spam, uh, sign up for my newsletter. So then we'll hit next, and then it's going to go through and create the task. So we'll go hit finish, and of course this will succeed because it's a Microsoft product and they never, ever, ever have bugs. So what to do, I'll go hit close and then we'll go look into what got created. If I look over here into my SQL server, of course it doesn't refresh automatically because that would be too complicated. We'll go in and refresh the list and now I have a maintenance plan up here for the sysadmins maintenance plans. And I also have a new job. I have a <laughs> I'd like to get a new job. I have a new job, SQL server agent job, and this is the job that's going to run overnight every night. So I'm not going to go into how you uh, review maiden, maiden job history and things like that, set up alerts inside this video. We've got separate tutorials on how you set up alerts for when things like this don't work. So now we have the overnight job. The, every, the transaction log backup job is going to be super simple because it only needs to do one thing. We want every like five minutes to back up whatever changes were made to our databases. Let's go up here to maintenance plans and we're going to start the wizard again. Wizard. And now hit next. This time around, I'm going to name it with sysadmins. And then we're going to say every 15 minutes, or we'll say every five minutes. I'm trying to get better about that. Log backups. And then I, I'm going to do a single schedule. And the schedule for this is going to be change. It is going to be daily every 15 minutes, uh, every five minutes. See, can you believe that? I keep screwing that up. For years, I've said every 15 minutes. And I'm like, that's really a bad idea. The business wants us to lose as little data as possible. So why am I doing every 15? Okay, so we're going to do it every five minutes. And you might think that backing up every five minutes is going to slow the server down too much. It's the exact opposite. You want to nibble off just the changes that were made every five minutes instead of waiting for a longer time and then trying to grab a whole bunch more changes. People will feel it more when you back up less, ironically. So I've set it up for every five minutes here. We'll say OK. And then we're going to hit Next. Then what tasks do I want to perform? I only want one. Back up the logs. Back up whatever changes were made to the database in the last five minutes. Hit next. Then what order should these tasks be performed? Let's think about that real hard. Come on, Microsoft. Next. Uh, then who do you want to back up? I want to back up all databases because I like to keep all of my job, not part of my job. Notice that it automatically says databases with simple recovery will be excluded, like we talk about in the transaction logging module. Uh, things like the system databases like master, you can't do log backups. It doesn't matter. SQL Server is really smart. Just put in all databases. It'll skip the ones where it can't do them. And then check the box for ignore databases where the state is not online and say OK. Destination, final, uh, go choose wherever you want your log backups going to, for example, whatever the UNC path was. This thing you need to change. So here it says backup file extension. You want to use the same file extension that you chose over on the full backup side. I just leave it at the default, which is BAK. The reason why I do that is that you only have one cleanup job. That cleanup job is kind of stupid. He's only looking for files with one file extension. So back this way, our, our cleanup job cleans everything up, not just one kind of backups. Doesn't matter what the file extension you use. You can use an, even use MP3 or PDF if you want to kind of have a sense of humor about it. 
over across on options. Here, we're going to change this to compress again. We're going to make sure that don't bother looking at whatever the default is. We're going to compress them every single time. We are also going to check the boxes for perform checksum and continue on error. So that just in case one database blows chunks, our backups continue to work. And then we'll go hit next. And do I want to write a report? Me for the log files, I don't. I did in the overnight one, because in the overnight one, we're doing CheckDB, and CheckDB is kind of important. I'm going to need to see the logs off of that if something blows chunks. I don't really need a text report from every five minutes when we're just doing log backup. So I'll uncheck that box and click Next. And then go Create Finish, and I have crossed the finish line again here. We'll go hit Close. And now you can see the fruits of your labor. If you go over onto the agent jobs, refresh that list. And now we have a set of jobs that are all set up protecting our databases. Now, um, I, as I mentioned in terms of timing, I would probably do this on a Friday afternoon just so that that way when you go in, you can check to make sure and see how long the next day, how long the history or how long this job took. To see how long it took, you can right click on the overnight job and click view history. When I view history, I get a little list down here. I'm going to choose a different job just because I've got one that runs uh, more often. I'm going to choose a different job. And then here it has all the times that this job has run. If I scroll across to the right hand side, I get duration. So there I can see how long the job took. I'd, if you have really crappy hardware and really large databases, it's totally possible that the setup that I just described could take six, eight, ten hours in order to accomplish. So that's where you, then you got to start having some tough discussions with management about what parts of the maintenance plans you need to peel out. Um, that is beyond the scope of what I would talk about in here, though. I think about all the tasks that I gave you should really be performed every night. If I did have to pull one out, it would be the reorging indexes or rebuilding indexes. That's gonna, it is gonna be some work, but it saves you in terms of performance. But if you have really crappy hardware, you got bigger problems anyway. All right, now you got your first maintenance plan. Congratulations, you're a god among whatever creature it is that you decide to call yourself. Good job. Woo! You should probably quit for the day and start drinking. I would say that for me, but it's like 6 a.m. here, 5 a.m., so I can't quite do that quite yet.